Hi all, in this video lecture I am going to explain about a timer A measurement in the capture mode. Before going through this video lecture, I request everyone to go through the previous video lecture of a timer A where which has been explained about a timer block of a timer A and a capture compare channel of a timer A. Okay, this is the simplified block diagram we have been discussed in our earlier video lecture. Okay. Just I will try to recall some of the concept which is required for a measurement in a capture mode. Okay, in a timer block we have a 16 bit uh, counter. Okay, that is called as a 16 bit timer register. And for this time 16 bit counter we have a 4 clock sources. That is TA clock is an external clock and an A clock and SM clock are an internal clocks and in clock this in clock and ta clock are complement to each other okay we can select any of this signal to an 16 bit counter okay straight away we can use that particular clock source or we can divide it by a factor of 102 or 48 okay then this timer can be operating in an four modes that is if it is mcx bit is 00, 0 it will be in an halt mode if it is 0, 01 it will be in an up mode it is going to count the values from 0 to the value specified in an TSCCR 0 once it has been reached it come back to 0 and it start counting then another mode is in continuous mode in the continuous mode it is going to count from 0 to maximum value of an FFFFH okay then it comes to once again 0 and it start counting to 0 FFFFH and there is an 1 1 okay in this 1 1 mode it is going to count upwards and then it is going to decrement downwards to 0 that is nothing but from starting to 0 it start incrementing until it reaches the value of an TSCCR 0 once it has been reached once again it start decrementing to 0 okay here we can generate an TIFG flag that is an timer inter flag this flag will be set only when my timer register goes to an 0 TR goes to 0 it is going to be set okay this is related to timer block and this is an capture compare channel okay for a timer A we might we can have an more number of this capture compare channel in our MSV 430F 2013 we have an three channels okay that is channel 0 channel 1 and channel 2 okay how you can identify that channel is simply the TSCCR 1 or in the suffix it is going to be telling that which channel you have been using okay here it has been shown with n1 if it is 0 it is going to be using 0 if it is 2 it is going to use channel 2 for uh, up uh, up mode or an up down mode always it utilizes the channel 0 register value okay that is an TSCCR 0 okay it is going to working in that fashion now let us try to see uh, recap recap the content what we have been discussed in a capture compare channel okay for this capture compare channel it can operate in two modes as its name suggests that either in a capture mode or in compare mode now we can configure that to a capture mode or in compare mode okay for compare mode we are going to make sure that this CAP cap bit control register value will be zero what it is going to do in a compare mode Simply it is going to see the value it has been attached to TSCCR with a timer register counter value. Whenever it becomes an equal then it is going to generate a capture compare inter flag. Okay that is the thing it is going to do in an compare. But when it comes to an capture okay it is going to capture the external signal or an internal signal connected to this bit CCI 1A or CCI 1B. Okay when it is going to capture okay that can be captured on rising edge or and falling edge or it can be captured on both rising and falling edge that will be decided by this cmx register okay detail it has been discussed in our previous video lecture if it is 00, zero means no capture 0, 01 means rising edge capture 10 means falling edge 11 means rising and then falling edge capture okay that is what it is going to do and the, along with the capturing of that signal it is going to capture the counter value to TSCCR0 okay then it is going to generate an interflag okay you need to recall this 
If you are in a compare mode, simply it is going to compare a TSCCR value with a counter value. Whenever it has been matched, it is going to generate an inter flag or it is going to change the output mode. But in a capture mode, it is going to capture the input signal as well as it is going to capture the timer count value to a TSCCR one. Okay, it can be a synchronous capture or asynchronous capture. In synchronous capture, whenever there is a rising edge of this clock uh, timer counter, at that time it is going to capture. Okay, this signal can also be accessed to SCCCI CCI. Okay, this is the basic required to understand today's lecture. Okay, now let us go to the actual concept measurement in capture mode. Okay, what we want to measure in a capture mode? Question arises. I request you to think for a minute by pausing a video what you want to measure. I hope everyone have been think about that one. Okay, what all the signals you can measure? Okay, I will take a simple scenario that you want to measure, consider a scenario that you have a push button. I hope everyone are aware of that push button. Okay, here you want to record how much amount of time that push button has been pressed. Okay, how can I know this? Okay, if I capturing or turn and rising edge and falling edge of that push button, either it might have been operating in a pull up configuration or pull down configuration, I can know the duration, what amount of time that push button has been pressed. Okay, that is a simple example. Then suppose someone have been given a signal, you don't know the frequency of that particular signal means, then also you can measure that signal by configuring into a rising edge capturing or a falling edge capture you can know the total time period and you can take the reciprocal of that and you can calculate the frequency okay like that you can utilize for a most number of applications or suppose if you want to know any obstacle how much time it has been occurred that also can be considered now let us see that what it has been discussed in our prescribed book john h davis the timer can be used in two opposite ways okay the first way okay measurement of signal duration or period by counting the cycle of unknown clock okay as you all know that i can have an a clock or an sm clock for an timer block okay it is going to be running Suppose if I want to know a duration or a pulse width of a signal, okay, this is the signal I want to know and duration. As you all know that in which configuration I want to configure if I want to know this duration, here there is a capturing on a rising edge and a falling edge. That's why my CMX should be in a 1-1 one -one configuration. Okay, on the rising edge, my TSCCR is going to capture the count value. Then all the falling edge also it is going to capture the count value. If I take the difference, I will be knowing that how many number of count it has been taken. If I know the time period of an counter clock frequency, just by multiplying with a difference count, I am going to get the duration. Okay, that is the one application. Then we have an another application. Okay, here I want to identify the time period of a signal. Okay, if I want to identify the time period of a signal, I want to capturing on a rising edges of the signal. On that time, I am going to get the old count. Okay, the same scenario. Take the count difference, multiply with the timer clock frequency time period. You are going to get the total time. Okay, that is the one thing. Then, uh, if I want to measure a frequency, I can go for an alternate method. Suppose whatever the signal time period I want to measure, that signal is consisting of a very much high frequency means the, before the completion of one, cycle, one clock cycle of a timer clock, it might have been completed. That is not possible. In order to overcome that one, what we can do, we can fed the external signal to a timer block itself the timer counter is going to count with external signal then the slow clock will be fed to an capture compare channel okay there i am going to capture this signal and i am going to get the frequency of how i can get that frequency simply i am going to count the number of uh, clock pulses it has been generated with an 
external signal and I am going to multiply with an A clock frequency simply it is going to give the frequency of that particular external signal okay now let us consider an example programming measurement of time press and then release of an button okay here I want to know that how much amount of time it has been pressed and released okay if I want to know this one I am been operating in an knowing the duration okay if I want to know the duration how I want to configure okay suppose if you take an TACCTL capture control register there I need to make sure that it has been configured for capturing rising and falling at this okay that is the one thing I want to know then in which particular pin it has been connected either CCIX1 or CCIX2 okay for which one it has been connected then I want to capture it on a synchronous mode or an asynchronous mode that I need to do then I want to set a cat bit in order to operating in a capture mode. then I want to enable an interrupt okay these things I wanted to do then in a when it comes to a timer block I need to make sure that what is the clock frequency I am been using then whether I am straight away using the same frequency or by dividing factor I am using then the timer in an which mode up mode or in continuous mode or an up down mode usually if you want to find out any duration it's better to be operating in an continuous mode that means I can get a full maximum delay if I am doing in an up mode there may be in some restriction that's why I suggest you to go for a continuous mode okay with that with that assumption I, I will start explaining the program as you all know that this first three lines are uh, may be already known to you I will not discuss that one then ash include lcd utilities dot h this is an lcd utility header files we have then we have an another one function wide port init it is an port initialization command okay now let us come to the main program first thing is we are going to disable watchdog timer then they are being configuring and load capacitance for a frequency lock loop clock generations next inside the main program they are initializing the ports okay i will explain that port initialization in the next slide then it has an lcd initialization then it is trying to display the line okay this is the general term now let us come to an capture compare channel initialization okay it has been in a cm3 that is nothing but a rising and falling edge capture okay ccix1 means it has been connected to ccix1 be pin then synchronous capture then it has been enabling and capture mode and then capture compare inter flag is enabled now let us come to an TACTL okay here they have been using a TASLX1 that is nothing but an A clock A clock has been gen selected ID0 means it has been not dividing then it is MC2 continuous mode it has been configured then I am clearing a timer counter to zero starting this is what it has been done next in the forever continuous loop they have pushed an processor into a low power mode 3 in a low power mode 3 only a clock will be active rest of all the clocks will be turned off okay this is the initial part okay by writing only these things it doesn't complete I want to write an interrupt service routine what should happen whenever there is an interrupt has been occurred as you all know that MSB 430 sub supports a vectored interrupt okay for each interrupt it has in some particular location there I can specify the name or where the subroute uh, interrupt need to be accessed okay that is what here it has been written pragma vector timer a 0 underscore vector okay this is the location where the timer a interrupt arises whenever there is an interrupt it goes to that particular location then it jumps from there where the interrupt service has been written okay in order to understand that one please go to the interrupt video lecture now interrupt white timer a isr for this one we have been writing an isr here i am taking a static unsigned integer 16 value last time is a variable we have been taken and 0 in a display unit we are going to take TSCCR 0 minus last time what is this TSCCR minus last time whenever there is a rising or a falling edge the 
counter value will be captured to t here tscr0 is going to capture the value of a timer counter whenever there is a rising or a falling edge initially whenever there is a rising edge has been occurred it is going to capture the value uh, when it has been first interrupt has been generated we don't know the what was the last value that's why we have been taken and last time is equal to 0 we are going to subtract and it is going to be there whenever the pulse has been gone to a low case again there will be an interrupt will be generated at that time i need to subtract with an previously old captured value that's why we are storing to an last time tscr current captured value will become an last stored okay when the interrupt has been occurred at that time the last time will be tscr0 now the current capture and then previous chapter is going to give the display interval how much amount of the time that push button has been pressed then okay now let us see the another some function which has been written for a ports initialization okay before getting into the that you need to know how the ports will be made as an input or an output okay if i want to make any pins on a port to be an input simply i will make those pins with an zero if i make it want to make it an output i am going to make with an one okay that's what here we have been done p1 out is equal to zero we have taken p1 dir we have been taken here the p1 dir has been assigned with an 0x ff and operation with negation of bit 0 and bit 1 okay that vit is nothing but an bit test or an bit set you can tell 0 and an 1 okay by default uh, all you know that all the ports or and pins have been made as an input that is nothing but an 0 if p1 dir is 0 all the inputs will be in a input configuration if i want to make it to an output configuration i need to set to those pin positions okay what here what they are trying to give ff means all 8 bits have been 1 with all 8 bits 1 they are trying to do an and operation with negation of bit 1 and then 0 okay that's why port 1 comma 0 and then 1 had been made as an input all other inputs uh, all other po port pins have been made as an output okay then by using an p1 select register they have been selecting an bit 1 okay here what this p1 select does is it is going to select that particular pin to an timer a a cci 0 bit okay this uh, pin external pin which have been push button has been connected to an port 1.1 has been connecting to an capture compare channel of an timer a that is an ccix0 b bit okay this is going to be getting selected for that okay this is an port initialization part okay i hope everyone are clear here we have been taken an duration of the press button okay in this interrupt service routine if someone have asked you to identify an frequency of an any signal connected to those particular bit means just you are you are going to get the difference in an count as you all know that what is the frequency you have been taken to an timer counter okay just if you take an one over that particular frequency you will get the delay you just uh, delay or in time period you just multiplied the time period with then this counter difference okay you are going to get an some value if you take an reciprocal of that value you are going to get the frequency of the signal connected to that okay in the same program you want to modify something in an interrupt service routine okay then you need to make sure that there we have been in in this particular program we have taken in an rising and then falling edge if i want to calculate in frequency you just make sure that you have been capturing or an rising or an falling edge okay now measurement of frequency and in comparison of sm clock and a clock okay there have been given in first method how you can calculate and frequency the another method is the general principle for for measuring a frequency f is to count the number of cycles n in a known interval of time t okay this is the general scenario you are going to do the signal under test is used as in the timer clock and an external signal should be applied to the ta clock pin 
okay as i already told that external clock frequency will be given to a timer a counter okay that pin is going to be connected for a ta clock okay to select the ta clock you are going to making sure that with the help of a tas select bits you are going to select that one remember to set pn select bit to connect this pin to a timer okay in order to connect that pin we want to enable this pn select bit also to select okay another advantage of going for measuring and frequency in this configuration is okay as you all know that sm clock uh, usually generated from our digital controlled oscillator okay we tell that that uh, sm clock is not that much accurate we will tell that the more accurate and unstable clock is an a clock that's why if you want to calculate any frequency that is the slowest clock it is available that a clock will be given to an capture compare channels and then uh, our the frequency what we want to measure that signals will be given into an this particular okay in this diagram you can think that the external signal which we want to measure and frequency will be connected to this ta clock pin and this a clock will be connected to either cc1b or an 1a through an internal selection pins okay here we are it is going to be running here it is we are going to capture and we are going to identify the signal okay the diagram earlier what we have been seen i have been taken this is an external clock here we have been captured there we are going to take the count okay the difference between this count we are going to multiply with an a clock that is going to give the frequency of this signal okay timer clock frequency okay this completes your measurement in a capture mode okay if you want to conclude this video lecture okay if i want to measure in any duration or in time period simply we are going to run the timer clock in a continuous mode we are going to capture the single line and rising edge and then falling edge for a duration if i want to capture in time period then we are going to capture it on a rising edges okay if you are following in first method then we are go going to take the difference of the count then we are that is nothing but an uh, we are going to multiply that with an frequent one over frequency value and we are going to take the reciprocal otherwise you can write it as an 1 divided by n2 minus n1 into that f a clock frequency it is going to give the frequency of the signal okay in this second method you know it how you can calculate thank you for watching